This was a game changer. This week we are going to do a review on our Sterling battery to battery charger. So let's get into it. Welcome back to Roadsteading. Ben and Lauren here. We are on I-64 westbound. We started our day off in Kentucky and we are headed to Illinois. How's my hair? Is my hair okay for filming? It's kind of a mess. Oh. Uh, oh well. Today we have about a 340 mile drive, but the first time we did this route, we did over 700 miles on this day. We were young, dumb, out of money, and had to get to work. We traveled to West Virginia. We were supposed to end in Benton, Illinois that night and found out there was no place to stay and we weren't too savvy on finding places to stay at that time. So we continued to drive. The first time I ever went through St. Louis was at night and we ended up in Missouri in a rest area. What were we thinking back then? Let's get to today's subject. We have just arrived at Wren Lake, a recreational complex as the sign says. We've stayed in this area before, but never in this campground. The first time at this campground, we usually stay north of here in a full hookup site. We have to fill our tank with water, and this hydrant does take a while. You have to hold it for the water to run, and we're filling our tank through our water filtration system. But like we said in the beginning of the video, we want to talk about our Sterling battery to battery charger. So let's do that while we're filling our fresh tank. What we love about our Sterling battery to battery charger is that it operates while we're going down the road. We've been on the road for five or six hours today. So what our Sterling battery to battery charger does is it charges our house batteries from the truck. Now we just installed the Mechman high output alternator. We're not doing a review on that alternator but that's a new addition to our systems. But we've had had the Sterling battery to battery charger for a few years now. And what I like about it is it charges our batteries while we're rolling down the road. It's almost like a byproduct of running the engine. The engine's already running, propelling the truck and trailer down the road. It's already burning fuel. Why not charge the batteries at the same time? And that's exactly what it does. What this allows us to do is charge our batteries while we're driving so that when we arrive into a campground like this one, our batteries are charged at 100% and we're ready to go. There's no setup and then start a generator. Because I don't want to be that guy that sets everything up and then starts his generator. Now we do use the Sterling battery to battery charger and the truck and we idle the truck acting like a generator. But I don't like to do this because well, our diesel truck is loud and I don't want to disturb anybody. But if we're out in a boondocking location and there's nobody around, yes, we'll idle the truck and use our Sterling battery to battery charger. It works just fine. I have to hold the valve on this particular hydrant and it's taking a while. We just drove in, no reservations, but they are quite busy. And like last week when we were in Kentucky, we're really surprised on how many people are traveling in the shoulder season. We know COVID has affected the RV industry. We saw it last year. And I think this is the signs of it this year too. Our Sterling battery battery charger has been running all day and with the solar. When we left this morning from our last campsite, our batteries were about 78% or so. And now they're at 100%. In fact, the solar charge controller is in flow and the Sterling battery to battery charger is in flow mode. But that's great because now our batteries are at 100% and we can settle in for the night here at Wren Lake. Hey Lauren, do you remember the last time we drove through here? Was it the last time? Yeah, it was the last time. And the tailgate fell off the back of the truck, the louvered tailgate. How could I forget that? <laughs> Apparently Ben thinks I could forget our tailgate falling off in Illinois. It fell off the back of the truck hooked the landing gear on the front of the trailer and was swinging back and forth in front of the trailer tires with our pin stabilizer attached to it. It was terrifying. I don't know how anyone could forget that. But we put it back on, put some bungee cords on it, and we kept it on there for the remainder of the trip. In fact, I think it made it all the way out to California later that year. But now we have the 
factory tailgate back on. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. It is kind of broken. We ran our battery to battery charger all day thinking that we were in a primitive site tonight and we just discovered it's an electric only site. That's a partial hookup. But let's finish talking about the battery to battery charger. Now the Sterling battery to battery charger does have a monitor inside the coach here. We use this primarily when we're just idling the truck and using the truck as a generator. I do wish I had something in the truck to monitor the batteries back here because more often than not we only use the battery to battery charger when we're driving down the road. I don't like to use our truck as a generator running it, idling it, because it is loud, especially in a nice quiet campground. But if you have a gas truck or a very quiet truck, something that's quieter than a small inverter generator like a Honda or a Yamaha inverter generator, I could see using it as a generator. Have you seen the new Ford F-150s? They come with an inverter installed and a plug in the bed so you can plug your RV right into the truck, but that's a different system. The Sterling battery to battery charger has so many different features and we haven't even utilized them all. We're just using the default settings where it senses the battery voltage and then turns itself on. There is a setting so when you turn the key it will turn itself on and it has a temperature sensor in our battery bank so it temperature compensates for charging our batteries. Now there are a lot of battery to battery chargers out there on the market today that weren't there three or four years ago when we started looking for a system like this. In fact, I thought I had to buy this from Europe, but I did find a distributor in Maine, and now there's distributors all through the US. The controls on the Sterling battery to battery charger are these two simple buttons. These are the only controls you have. And there's a chart inside the book that you have to reference, and then you would hold these buttons, either this button or this button, or both of them together for a period of time. For example, I'm going to put it into a force float mode, which means you have to hold both buttons for two seconds. Now the lights do blink, indicating each second, which is nice. So one, two, there we go. Now it's in a force float mode. Kind of like pager technology. It would be nice if there was an app for this, but I'm really not a fan of apps. These controls here, I think are just fine. There's a Renogy version, Victron Energy has their own version of a, they call it a DC to DC charger. So there's other ways of going about doing this. But we really like this feature because all we did was drive here, we had to do that anyway, and we charged our batteries while we were doing it. We hope you enjoyed the Sterling battery to battery charger review we did. It has been a game changer since we've installed it and we really enjoy it. Now this campground that we're staying in, it's pretty impressive. We haven't seen too much. In fact, to our site was a very short drive from the gate. So we need to go check out the lake and see what else they got going on here. So until next time, continue to seek, learn, experience, and grow. And join our caravan by pushing that subscribe button and subscribing on our webpage. Hey Lauren, why don't we get a gas truck so we can use it like a generator? We just changed everything over to diesel. You are not getting a gas truck now.